We just witnessed the end to yet another thrilling F1 season. Although not without controversy, a lot has happened. Some people lost their seat, some got their seat, and others got a reserved driver role for next season. Today, we're going to talk about the shakeup on the field for the 2023 season and go over all of the things that happened this year. So fasten your seatbelts before we start our F1 engines. There have been a lot of changes this season, which will be seen in the next. Let's briefly discuss them before we hop onto the summary. Pierre Gasly changed teams. He's going to be driving alongside Esteban Ocon for the French car manufacturer Renault. The dream of having a fully French F1 team is going to be finally fulfilled during the 2023 F1 season. Fernando Alonso is going to fill the space of Sebastian Vettel next season after he retires from F1. Daniel Ricciardo, the McLaren driver, just couldn't find his groove and got dropped by the team. Red Bull, however, took him on as a reserve driver next season and might be the one to replace Perez down the line. Who knows? Mick Schumacher. The only Schumacher left in F1 got dropped by Haas. He got a reserved seat at Mercedes in exchange. Latifi. Rumors say that this Nutella-loving man wasn't needed anymore because Williams allegedly had their finances straight so the pay driver wasn't needed anymore. Vettel is retiring after 15 years of F1. Danke Seb. Logan Sargent, he's still waiting on his super license, but as it stands right now, he'll be the one to take Latifi's seat at Williams. Nico Hulkenberg, the German driver, got his seat at Haas back. He's not new to the F1 grid, but he still needs to make his mark just like the rookies. Oscar Piastri, taking the seat of Daniel in 2023. Nick DeVries, previously known for being F2 and Formula E world champ. He'll be driving for AlphaTauri. Also, Binotto, the now former Ferrari team boss, got replaced by Fred Vasseur. Safe to say that it was a busy renovation this year for the pinnacle of motorsport. I feel like a broken record for having to say this, but this season was Max year for sure. He has broken almost every record in the book regarding seasonal records that were left. Having the most wins in a season and the most points, truly dominant this year. Like talked about in a previous video, Max has been quite controversial this season again. But that doesn't take away the fact that he will be crowned the Formula 1 champion of 2022, which means he got his second championship under his belt before the age of 26. Quite impressive. The young lad could be in for more than two championships as his fans claim on social media. He has had a nightmare of a start to the season with Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc beating him week after week, then played catch up until the summer break and got ahead from there on out, winning him the title at quite the controversial Suzuka full points race. Checo missed out on the number 2 spot by a mere 3 points. We've done the math for you. Max's controversial move the week before would not have mattered with this score unfortunately. The two in red driving men couldn't quite handle the Bulls this season. However, they did very well, considering that Sainz and Leclerc finished on 5th and 7th last season. Now finishing 5th and 2nd, and 2nd in constructors instead of 3rd, Leclerc unfortunately got defeated quite early in the season, while he was ahead for a long time and it looked as if Ferrari were going to do it at the start of the season. Although not his best season, and certainly not his best car, Hamilton did fairly decently this year. His teammate and Mercedes rookie George Russell, however, outscored the 7-time world champion by a whopping 35 points. Mercedes went from battling for 4th position with McLaren to battling for 2nd position with Ferrari in the span of a few months, which is ridiculously good. Big ups to the team for that one. The battle was tough, but the Pink Panther in combination with the old Fox were just a tad too big for the orange and blue McLaren. Norris was consistently outsourcing his teammate Daniel Ricciardo, aka the Honey Badger, and both Alpine drivers. But unfortunately, Norris couldn't clinch the fourth place alone and Ocon and Alonso just barely snuck out with a win on McLaren. The 2022 regulations work surprisingly effectively. Everyone else except the previously mentioned drivers and teams were a midfield team this year, with Alfa Romeo and Aston Martin both finishing 7th with 55 points after both the German 4-time world champ and Sir Lancelot Stroll finished in Abu Dhabi within the points. This was Vettel's last F1 race. Danke Seb! Both Mick and Magnussen performed quite well this season, with Magnussen even getting pole position this year in a bloody Haas. The sprint race of Brazil didn't quite bless him as well as the qualification gods did with the rain the day before. He still clinged onto a point though. Also, the last race for Mick Schumacher has been raced unfortunately. Alfa Tauri has struggled this year though, finishing second to last. Gasly wasn't anywhere near his performance of 2021 in our opinion. Tsunoda, however, performed great for his experience and it seemed like he has become more confident in the Red Bull sister team's machinery. Oh, you thought we forgot Alfa Romeo? 
the janitor and so the rookie of the year performed quite well in their Ferrari powered car. They had a huge amount of crashes, which cost them the advantage over Aston Martin. There was one incident with Zoe which caused a lot of anxiety among fans at home and on the grandstands. Very unfortunate, but someone's got to be the backmarker. Williams couldn't quite do it this year either, finishing off the season with a mere 7 points while Alpha Tori finished ahead of them with 35. Gotifi and Alex Albon couldn't quite do it with the machinery they got. The Q3 qualification for Latifi was super good though and one of the highlights of the season in our opinion. At first, people including me and people around me didn't quite like the new car design that was presented in 2021. It looked chunky. It wasn't what F1 was about most of us might have thought. It turned out great though. The interpretation of the teams were fascinating to say the least and it managed to bring a lot of diversity in design, with Mercedes even going with the no pod design which shocked the paddock in the testing weeks. Red Bull and Ferrari, however, were spot on. They nailed the design in different ways and both were the quicker teams over Mercedes. It was a first in a long time. Next year, we'll be seeing more of the same though since all teams have gathered info over the competitors and got more time to test and update the current design. The 2023 regulations will be mostly safely related, with the biggest requirement, bigger mirrors so that the blind spot will be smaller. The 18-inch tires were also a great addition as the teams needed to accustom to them making pit stops especially at the start of the season more evenly distributed among the teams in terms of having the fastest crew to do it. If you like this video so far, please race to that subscribe and like button to claim your pole position trophy. The game is on. Circuits are being added left, right, and center, and the F1 calendar looks fuller and fuller year by year, which is great for us F1 enthusiasts, but maybe not so much for the drivers, which means certain circuits need to be scrapped. Monaco was rumored to go for a long time, but those just turned out to be rumors fortunately. Las Vegas, was the main star this year to be added for the next season. That's it for today. Later, 